Good morning. My name is Judy Dalton. I'm a senior pastor at First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Pasadena, Texas. Today is August 21st, 2022. We are here at the Dalton House to lead worship today. I say we because my husband David Dalton is here and he takes care of all of the technical issues plus he sings like an angel. Also here through her recordings is Dr. Julie Durgis, our congregation's chief musician. Also here is you. Um, or are you if there's a bunch of people in your house? So anyway, I'm delighted to worship with you today. Please leave a comment so that I know that uh, you are part of the worshiping community this week. First Christian Church of Pasadena, Texas is dedicated to doing the right thing by our neighbors, and part of that is giving credit where it is due. That's why we have obtained the correct licensing for the recording and sharing of this worship service, as well as for our printed worship guide. Our CCLI number is 439-1628. If you have a candle with you today, I encourage you to light it at this time. When we do this, oh Jesus, my last match. Ah, when we do this, when we light a candle as we worship, we remember that God is with us no matter where we are. And when we do this, uh, particularly us, we who worship remotely, we remind ourselves that we're not alone, that we are a part of a larger community of faith, no matter where we meet to worship. The best part of waking up is Jesus and a cup of coffee. So I sat down yesterday to write the sermon. I'd already done the research. I had already scribbled out an outline. I had it all kind of mapped out. And I was just going to put pen to paper, as they say, or fingers to the keyboard. I decided to read just one more article. And this was out of an academic journal. And I just kind of picked it up to see if I could still read it, you know. Um, and that article, published six months ago by one of the premier scholars, changed everything. Out went my outline. Out went my illustrations. Out went my thesis. I had to start from scratch. So if I sent you anything yesterday before about midnight, yeah, it may not be right. I have questions, so many questions. Today, let's talk about a few of them. What is temporary? What is eternal? What is essential? Oh, church, let's grab a cup of joe because we might need it as we continue to pour over Hebrews. And now it's time for a special, special message with the children. So go ahead and gather up any kids in the household or take notes for any children you may see during the course of your week. With me today is Wendy Bear. And also here is Coney Dog. Well, it's been rainy here. So we've been cooped up inside the house for days and days. We've all got a little extra energy we need to use and we just can't go outside and play like we want to. Wendy Bear and Coney got, Dog got a little testy yesterday afternoon. I could hear them in the other room and they were arguing, pitching a fit. Finally, I intervened. I said, tell me what's going on. Well, Wendy Bear explained that they were debating what's the strongest. Okay, well, that, that's kind of interesting. I, I suggested that we turn the fight into a friendly conversation. In fact, 
I took it outside. It was, we had a little break in the rain, so we decided to take a little walk around the block while we talked. And we talked, and we wondered, and we questioned, and we thought, what do you think, children? What is stronger, a bird or a lizard? Well, I don't know. I guess it would depend on what's going on. What do you think is stronger, children? A mountain or a river? Hmm, I have an idea on that one. What do you think is stronger, children? Fear or love? Well, this one I know for sure. Love. Love is stronger. Love, especially God's love, is strongest of all. God loves you so much that there is extra love left over for you to share with others. Let's live God's love. And that means we talk to God. And we call that prayer. That means we listen to God. That means we take care of others like our pets, our brothers and sisters, our family, our neighbors, and ourselves. Let's live God's love. Okay, it's time to pray, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our families. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the church. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. So much, so much that there's extra love left over. That there's extra love left over. Help us to live your love. Help us to live your love. We love you, God. We love you, God. Amen. Amen. All right. Our first song today Amen. is called We Are Standing on Holy Ground. <clears throat> we'll sing it through twice. scripture reading today comes from the book of Hebrews. Get it? My coffee cup says Hebrews. We're in chapter 12 starting at verse 18 and we'll go through 29. The um, reading starts by talking about Mount Sinai. Um, that's where uh, Moses and the people in the wilderness were encamped. Uh, they were encamped at the foot of it when um, Moses brought down God's Ten Commandments. Okay, so we have a little background. Hebrews 18 through 29. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire, and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg not 
to be that another word not be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given if even an animal touches the mountain it shall be stoned to death indeed so terrifying was the sight that Moses said I tremble with fear but you have come to Mount Sion and to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem and to innumerable angels and festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase yet once more indicates the removal of what is shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, God is a consuming fire. Picture this, an elegant outdoor seating area. Two women are at a small round table with a fancy coffee service. The older woman with her hair pulled back and wearing a dress says, well, David and uh, dad, uh, she, excuse me. Oh, I messed it up. Okay, the older woman with her hair pulled back says, well, Dad and George are out of the house and I've made some General Foods International coffees. The younger woman, dressed modestly in sweater and slacks, answers, Terrific, now we can talk. The angelic choir sings, Celebrate the moments of your life. The older woman pours as she intones, I feel like some smooth, Café Francais. The younger woman notices the canister before her. Mmm, Swiss mocha, just for me? The older woman smiles and says, I remember chocolate's your favorite flavor. They sip their hot drinks. And then the younger woman declares, Mmm, delicious. You always make me feel special. As she reaches out to hug, no, too demonstrative. To lightly touch the arm of her companion, the heavenly choir resounds, celebrate the moments of your life with international food, with General Foods International coffees. Oh, oh. Okay, well, I kind of botched it, but that's the actual transcript from a television commercial that ran in 1980 as a part of a larger multimedia ad campaign. General Foods International coffees were mixes made of sugar, powdered milk, flavorings, and instant coffee. This is instant coffee! Not so grand, but at the time they seemed like the height of sophistication. Celebrate the moments of your life. We're studying the final chapters of Hebrews this month, which sum up the most important teachings for a life of faith. Today's scripture passage is a particularly difficult one, so I'm delighted to explore it with you. As the woman from the commercial exclaimed, Terrific, now we can talk. So let's pour over today's reading and Celebrate the moments of our life. Okay, the book of Hebrews is steeped, steeped, I tell you, like a tea bag in Old Testament scripture, apocryphal writings, and Christian epistles. There are over 
20 allusions and direct references in today's passage alone. Hebrews is also steeped in supersessionism. This is the idea that the church has replaced Israel as God's favorite, as God's favored body of people, that Christianity is better than Judaism, which came before it. Now, I'm here to tell you a lot of violence has come from this concept. Christians have tried throughout the millennia to force their beliefs on people by beating them, by torturing them, and sometimes even by murdering them in the name of converting them. Many, many pastors today shy away from anything reeking of supersessionism. And many pastors will try to soften or even sanitize the scriptures that speak of Christianity's superiority so as not to continue the historic abuse. Jewish New Testament scholar, now that you heard me correct, she's a Jew and a New Testament scholar. Jewish New Testament scholar Amy Jill Levine suggests, however, that we can determine ways of believing our religion is the best that are less harmful and perhaps even helpful. For example, we might use this belief to explain to one another why our tradition matters. We might use it to teach insiders or to explore writings from other faiths in a respectful manner. Amy J. Levine says, it is better to admit and address supersessionism in the Bible and in church history rather than to debate it or deny it. Okay. It's there. What do we do now? Where is the good news? When we sift through all that is shakable, we can see that today's scripture is about comparing what is temporal with what is transcendent, what is unsteady with what is unshakable. There are Two mountains in today's passage. Uh, Mount Sinai is where we are at the beginning of our, our passage today. Mount Sinai was where Moses helped God to reveal the Ten Commandments. The other mountain in today's passage is Mount Zion. Mount Zion is another name for heaven. Hebrews tells us that we have come to this Mount Zion. Not that we will come, but we have come. In other words, this is already our reality. If only we have the faith to see it, well then, that is good news. The kingdom of God is already here, sort of. Not yet. And already, Hebrews is quite clear that the God of Sinai is very much the God of Zion. Mount Sinai is a part of creation, which means it is good. Remember, God created in Genesis and said, this is good. Mount Sinai is not bad. It's just temporary. It's shakable. It's changeable. A river can change it. So can other things. Did you know that, speaking of changeable landscapes, back in 2018, a volcano in Hawaii erupted, the Kalea volcano. And, and, and this eruption was the biggest one in, in a long, long, long time. And it not only collapsed the summit of volcano Kalea, but it also added an astounding 875 acres of new land to the island. The, the big island, the island called Hawaii, is now larger than it was, what, like four years ago, five years ago. That's amazing. It's changeable. But we 
church. We need something unshakable. We need something steady to support us. Hebrews says that the voice of God shakes the earth and the heavens. That's the kind of power that prompted Annie Dillard to write this. She wrote, It is madness to wear ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. They should lash us to our pews. Jasper Peters summarizes. He says, The true focus of this passage is on the uplifting of that which is unshakable. And that, my brothers and sisters, is nothing less than the kingdom of God. What endures is all that has turned to love. And we are a part of that, love. We are a part of the kingdom of God. In fact, we work with God to make the kingdom of God a reality right here, right now. So what we do matters, church. See God's love in action. Celebrate the moments of your life. Last May, here's an example. Last May, David and I uh, went on a long, long trip. And we started by going up to Fort Worth. And we found ourselves at Central Christian Church in Fort Worth, Texas. There we were, minding our own business. I only went to please my dad. That's, that's where he worships. Suddenly, there we were in worship, and the congregation began to sing Daddy's favorite hymn of all time. I reached over and held his hand as we sniffled and sang together. It was a holy moment. It was a glimpse of the glory of God. I bet you've had those times too. Jill Duffield urges us to recognize these experiences as real, unmediated access to God. She continues, she writes, You know better. You know Jesus. Do better. Well, I'm here to tell you, church, it starts here and it grows out there. Here we worship, which is to say we offer divine service to the Lord. We give this time, we give our attention to God in liturgy, which literally means the work of the people. And then we continue the work throughout the week. We continue our awareness of the presence of God throughout our days at work, at school, in the marketplace, in our homes, and then, every day will be a special day to celebrate the moments of our life. And may God help us to keep learning and changing as we cling to that which is unshakable, the very love of God. I invite you to follow Jesus. If you want to be a Christian, leave me a comment so we can talk. And if you're already a disciple of Christ, I urge you to deepen your discipleship. And I've got some ideas on how. Read your Bible. Our psalm for this week is going to be Psalm 71, especially verses 1 through 6. Hopefully you brought a coffee mug with you or teacup with you to worship today. Um, our assignment was to bring one that symbolizes celebration. So I have brought this coffee cup. This coffee cup is part of our good china, as we call it. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and, and interestingly enough, this pattern is uh, by Lennox, and it's called Eternal. So it kind of fits with uh, the, um, the theme very much and with our scripture. So this is uh, our pattern. It's Eternal by Lennox. And I brought this today 
because a lot of women will pick out a china pattern before they get married. Well, I was in my 30s, still not married. I was professional, you know, I, I was pastoring a church and I still had no good china. And I was very sad. And I, I think a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just go ahead and buy some? You don't have to buy a whole set, just, you know, buy a place setting. And I did. And then I bought another place setting so I could have a meal with a friend. And I slowly bought enough so that if, when my family would come visit, we could have a meal together on the good stuff. And then I realized, why should I wait for a special meal? And so every once in a while, I'll get out the good stuff and, uh, and enjoy it. Because we should celebrate every moment. Because I'm here to tell you, God's going to come when we least expect. God's not going to wait for Christmas or Easter or Thanksgiving or, or somebody's birthday to bless us. Use your good stuff now. Wear your pretty jewelry now. Give people messages of love and care now. Don't wait till funerals. Celebrate the moments of your life today. That's my story. Um, take some time right now, pause the video, and uh, share the story of your mug with whoever you're worshiping with in your household, or write me a note and tell me about your special mug. And next week, next week is our last week to bring our mugs. So I know you'll want to participate. Bring a mug that reminds you of being a Christian. Interpret that as you will. There are other ways of, of deepening our discipleship. We have shared our stories and now we're going to share our money. We are um, giving donations to Bright Divinity School right now to educate and inspire people to serve God's diverse world as leaders in churches, the academy, and public life. And don't forget to give to your local congregation or First Christian Church of Pasadena. Our mailing address and Venmo information are located on our Facebook page. As we make our offerings, let us receive as a blessing and part of her offering beautiful music recorded by Dr. Julie Durgis.
hold your cell phone or your check. And let's pray silently for the building up of God's kingdom and the sharing of the good news that our gifts make possible. Let us pray. Amen. We have some house guests uh, staying with us here at the Dalton House. Uh, two young men from Latvia, and they are darling. Um, this morning, uh, we were having breakfast, and um, <laughs> the younger one was so silly, he uh, wanted to eat ice cream for breakfast. And, uh, you know, he's 20, like 21, 22, you know. I'm like, it's your business, you know, whatever you want to do. So he was eating his uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream and drinking coffee for breakfast. Uh, and I was giving him a hard time. Um, and then he put the ice cream in his coffee. And I said, oh, mm, that's, that's where I draw the line. Uh, David, though, was much more hospitable and loving and compassionate. In, instead of going, Bleh, like I did, he uh, took the time to say, you know, I know someone who uh, also has interesting tastes, and, and she likes to eat her pinto beans with mayonnaise. Well, you know, I was expecting the boys to, well, they're men, to say, ew, but you know what they said? Oh, yeah, everybody in Latvia eats them like that, too. And we're like, what? True confession, you know, we all eat weird stuff. Here's mine. I eat vegetables straight out of the can. I don't even heat them up, you know. It's good if I put them in a bowl. So no matter what you like to eat, no matter what you prepared for communion for today, you are welcome here at the Lord's table. Come. Taste and see that God is so very good. Let us pray. Oh God, for this meal set before us, we give you thanks. We recognize that your love is the strongest force in existence. We realize that what is unshakable is your love heavenly kingdom and we understand that we are co-workers with you in making that kingdom a reality here on earth so bless us as we partake of whatever we eat and drink each time remembering that those who gather with us are part of the great community of faith fellowship of the saints your beloved children. Amen. We remember the night Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took the bread of their meal and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. He broke the bread and he gave it to the disciples, saying to them, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner after supper, Jesus took the cup of their meal. After giving thanks to God, he gave the cup to his disciples and he said to them, This is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to join me as we pray the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last song today is called Just As I Am. time together, let us go in peace to live God's love so that our worship will continue everywhere. And that's good to the last drop.